Third speaker, Aljani Zarana. Aljani is the school teacher. Thank you, fellow chairman, contest Toastmasters, fellow Toastmasters. All of you know what I do for a living. Those of you who don't, I work as a doctor. The better terminology is a consultant physician and endocrinologist. My story for this Tall Tales begins in 2014 when I was working at the Martyr Private Hospital in Townsville. Uh, all of you know we had a horrible premier back then called Campbell Newman who was cutting all the jobs for teachers. Teachers <coughs> were coming into my clinics complaining of stress and I used to do all kinds of blood tests and x-rays and scans and said it's completely normal, it's just the stress. Then one day they all went on strike and the headmistress of the school, the local school, phoned me up, all responsible citizens Please come in and teach the school kids. There's no one to teach them. The teachers are on strike. So I put up my hand and said, let me go and see how it goes. Let me try my hand as a teacher. So I go to the school. And the headmistress says, all right, um, one hour each, four subjects. Would you like to teach English, please, to the, to the students? So I go to the English class. Um, I meet the students. I introduce myself. Ask the first student, let's do fill in the blanks. I'll start the sentence. You finish the blanks. The first sentence is, too many cooks, they didn't say spoil the broth, they said less food. <laughs> <laughs> then I said, um, if you can't face the heat, blanks, they said jump into a swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> then I said, um, um, a dollar saved is blanks, they said insignificant. <laughs> <laughs> then I said, uh, strike when the Instead of iron is hot, they said, bug is near. <laughs> and I said, what kind of students are these? Then I gave them an essay contest, write an essay about your favorite pet. And there were two indigenous kids sitting next to each other. I didn't know they were brothers. Until I read their essays, identical, word to word. <laughs> I said, wow, well, why, why is it word to word? Both of you, I always asked you about the dog, word to word. And they said, uh, we're both brothers, we wrote about the same dog. <laughs> Then I went back to the headmistress after one hour. You must be nuts, I can't be a teacher. Give me another subject, please. There I am. So I said, okay, go teach maths. So I went for maths. And then I went to the first student. Assume your daddy gives you one dollar and your daddy gives you another dollar. How many dollars do you have now? He says, one dollar. I said, you don't know your maths properly. He said, you don't know my daddy properly. <laughs> <laughs> He's a miser. <laughs> then I go on to the second kid. Um, it's a little girl, <coughs> Chloe. Chloe. Um, if I give you four rabbits and I give you four rabbits the next day, how many will you have? She said eight. Then I said, good, if I give you four turtles and I give you another four turtles, how many will you have? Nine. Oh, these kids are not good in maths. I said, why do you only have nine turtles? She said, because I already have one pet turtle at home. <laughs> and I went to the third kid and said, um, if, I, if you put your hand in your pocket and there's one dollar and you put your hand in another pocket, there was one dollar, how much would you have? He says, uh, oh, if I put my hand in another pocket, I'll put my hand in another kid's pocket. So it's not getting anywhere. So I go run back to the headmistress and say, no, change the subject, please. She said, okay, go for model sciences. So morality. So I go to the first kid, tell me a model story. So she says, don't count your chickens before they're hatched. Because my uncle is a farmer and he was driving his truck full of eggs from uh, Townsville to <laughs> Bowen. And he went too fast on a speed bump, all the eggs broke and he went into a loss in his business. So don't count the chickens before they hatch. Excellent, for once they're doing well. Okay, second student. They don't count the chickens before they hatch, she says, just because her cousin brother had 12 eggs laid by the pet hen, and he tried to incubate the 12 eggs, but only seven hatched and five got spoiled. So moral of the story, don't count the chickens before they hatch. Great. Then I go to the third student. What's your moral? He says, my uncle fought in the Vietnam War. He had a machete, a machine gun, and some marijuana. <laughs> he jumped from the helicopter down to the Viet Cong. There were 150 Viet Cong. He shot 80 of them with his machine gun. He knocked out with the machete, knocked out another 40. And then uh, with his bare hands, he strangulated the last 30 after he took his marijuana. So I said, what, what could possibly come good? What possibly good can come out of that? What's the moral of that story? He says, don't mess with my uncle when he's high on marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, enough is enough. These kids are nuts. One last subject. Uh, physical education. All of you know that I do boxing, all of you know that I do fencing. So um, I went to the headmistress and said, one last try. She 
She said, okay, you look like a sporty guy, Ajanis. Uh, I've seen your YouTube videos, all that fencing, all that boxing. So maybe you might succeed as a physical education teacher. So I go to them and teach them what's a burpee, what's a sit-up, what's a push-up. I teach them all boxing moves, but they're not interested in town school. Because all of you know, they won the NRL last year. <laughs> they said our favorite game is rugby. So I said, all right, how many of you are Townsville rugby cowboy fans? All of them put their hands up, except one little girl, Phoebe. I said, Phoebe, what's the matter? What, 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 what team do you support? She says, Brisbane Broncos. I said, that's good. Are you from Brisbane? She says, no, I'm from Townsville. I said, well, oh, well, that's strange. OK. Um, why do you support Brisbane Broncos? And she said, because both my parents support Brisbane Broncos. And I said, Phoebe, you don't have to do what your parents tell you to do. What if your parents were idiots? And what did she reply? They would be Townsville Cowboys fans. <laughs> and she got offended by the whole class. So to conclude, I went back to the principal the headmistress's office and I said, um, probably, just write us a comment, not even a piece of advice, just a comment. Stick at doing what you're good at. And I went back to the hospital. <laughs> Thank you very much.